do. Hey, if this is your very first time, welcome. We are so glad that you're here, and uh, we just are excited about what's taking place. We want to encourage you to stop by the booth out in the foyer if this is your first time. Connect with us. Let us give you some more information about the church. We are in week two of a series that we started last week and titled Fresh Start, and uh, as we left 2020 and we come into 2021, I think all of us want a fresh start. I mean, we want something new. We want something different inside of our lives, and so what we said last week, if you weren't here, is that to get something new, to have a fresh start, it's not something new, but it's actually going to be the same. That there is power in the same because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the kind of the big thought throughout this series is this, is that your potential is connected to your patterns. That your potential for you is going to be connected to your patterns. Your potential for your future is connected to your patterns. That we have to develop some rhythms and patterns in our life that's going to get us to the destinations that we desire. I, as I preach often, as we prepare messages, truthfully, these things speak to me, hopefully, as much as they speak to you. This last week, as I began the, the beginning of the week, I, I realized that in 2020, I had lost some patterns in my life. I realized that there were some things that I had gotten out of rhythm. And this last week, I just said, hey, I got to get these back into my life. I got to get some patterns that's going to get me to the place that I want to see for me. And so I began to get back into those patterns, and I saw a difference in my week. And I hope that you begin to understand that your potential for this year is going to be connected to the patterns and the rhythms that you develop. And so that we need patterns, we need rhythms that are healthy for our life that will ultimately lead us to the destination that we desire. So we said last week that consistency is going to be the key to a fresh start. Being consistent with some patterns is going to be the key to a fresh start. You want a fresh start? Get consistent. You want some different things for your future? Develop some patterns. Get consistent with those patterns. And so today I want to talk to you about if you want a fresh start, you're going to need some consistent thoughts. You're going to need some consistent thoughts that your life, my life, will be marked by how well we control our thoughts. Your life will be marked by how well you control your thoughts. You could say it this way. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. You want something different for your life? You want a fresh start? You want something different in 2021? You'll never change your life until you change the way you think. Here's how the Bible puts it. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 Verse 2, this is the message version, and it says this, Wise thinking leads to right living. Stupid thinking leads to wrong living. Wise thinking leads to right living. Stupid thinking leads to wrong living. You will never change your life until you change the way you think. And so I want us to look at some principles this morning about our thoughts, the, the way that we think And then I want to give you several application points of how you take what the Word of God says and how you can take it and apply it and leave this place today and begin to put it into practice. So if you're taking some notes, the first principle you need to understand about our thinking is this. Everything begins with a thought. Everything begins with a thought. The things that you're doing well and the things that you are not doing well all begins with your thoughts. Here's the problem. Most people try to change their behavior without changing their thought process. And the results is that you get the same outcomes that you got in the past. We try to change our behavior without actually working on changing our thoughts, but everything begins with the thoughts. And so if everything begins with a thought, then we need to be extremely aware of the thoughts that we're allowing into our lives. We need to be extremely aware of the thoughts that we have at the very first part of our day. There's a principle that we see throughout the Bible, and it's the principle of the first. And so I think it's extremely important that we watch what thoughts we're allowing to filtrate into our mind, into our hearts, and into our spirits at the very first part of the day. I realized this in my life and in the rhythms that I had several weeks ago. That there was a period where every morning I would wake up and I would pick up my cell phone that was sitting right next to my bed. Anybody else grab your cell phone, like kind of the first thing in the morning? 
and I have all these notifications that come on my screen, and, and sometimes there would be emails that would be on the screen, and there would be text messages and Facebook notifications, sometimes a news article that would pop up. And what I quickly began to realize is this, is that those thoughts that were allowing into my mind at the very first part of the day was affecting and influencing the rest of my day. Sometimes I would get an email that I'm like, man, this is a discouraging email. Sometimes I would get a text message and, and something negative was happening. Or I would look at a news article. Let's just be honest. Every news article that you look at right now is just like negative. And that would begin to influence the thought patterns for the rest of my day. I would wake up angry. I'd be like, man, why are we so stupid as a nation? What's going on? Why is this person mad at me? What's going on with this? Like, it would just mess up the rest of my day. And so I said, you know what? I need to change that pattern. I need to be very careful what I allow to enter my mind at the very first part of my day because everything begins with a thought. The process of your day, the direction of your day is gonna begin with a thought. So here's what I began to do. I got the YouVersion Bible app on my phone. I set the notification to hit me first thing in the morning. So when I grab that phone, you know, the very first thing I see on my phone is a notification from the Bible app. And I just scroll across it. I open that up and I read the very first passage of scripture that they pop up for the day. You say, Aaron, does that that make a difference? Yes, it makes a huge difference because everything begins with a thought. And I want the thoughts in my life to begin to move myself in the direction of who God sees me. And I allow the word of God to be the very first thing that I consume in my day. I allow it to be the very first thought that crosses my mind, the goodness and the greatness of God instead of all the negative things that are going on in our world. You see, everything begins with a thought. And so what you are doing first will set the precedent for your day. There's a process that God wants you to engage in, and it begins with a new way of thinking. Everything begins with a thought. The essence of the gospel is new thinking because it all starts with a thought. The very reason you came to a relationship with Jesus Christ is what? Because you had a thought. You thought to yourself, you know what? My life is a mess. You thought, I need a savior. I need someone to save me from the mess and the junk and the things that are going on. And so you said to yourself and you thought to yourself, there's got to be more to this life. And in that thought process, you found a relationship with Jesus Christ. You thought, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I'm gonna come to Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says in Romans 12, verse two, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How is he going to transform us into a new person by the thoughts that we have? By changing the way you think. By changing the way you think. Everything begins with a thought. You can't just try to change your behavior without changing your thinking. The Bible says that God's going to transform us, and he's going to transform us by the way that we think. And if everything begins with a thought, we need to make sure that the right thoughts are coming into our mind at the very first part of the day. That's the first principle. The second principle is this. What we think determines how we feel. What we think determines how we feel. See, we get this backwards. We think people's actions and responses to us are gonna determine how we feel. And so we go through life, and if we're having a bad day, you know what we do? We blame it on somebody else. Man, my spouse made me really upset this morning. She didn't have my lunch packed. My, my boss really ticked me off, man. He, he went off on me. My, my teacher was so negative in class, and it just it messed up the rest of my day. Man, I, you know, my thoughts, are, you know, I'm, I'm being affected by the economy. My, my, my 401K is going down, and I, I blame the way that I feel on my 401K. Or, hey, man, I, I listen to the news. This is all the government's fault. It's everybody else's fault. I feel the way I feel because of all of the outside circumstances that are happening around me. But the truth is this, what we think determines how we feel. Your response to those things are determining how you feel. So we need this filter in our mind to make sure that we're filtering out some of these outside influences that affect us in very different ways. You see, so much of life isn't about what happens to you, but how you think about what happens to you. So much of life isn't about what happens to you, but how you think about what happens to you. That's how life really boils down. That's why something bad can happen to one person and they fall apart. Like it it wrecks their life. The same exact experience can happen to another person and they just get closer to God. 
It's why people can grow up in the same environments, work at the same place, grow up in the same household, and one person have negative thoughts and their life be a wreck, and the other person in those same environments have a completely different experience. Because it's not about what happens, it's about how you think about what happens. The same is true about stress. Sometimes we look at our lives and we are like, man, I'm stressed out. I'm overwhelmed. There's so much that's happening. And the thing about stress is this. Stress is not about how much you have to do. Stress is how you think about what you have to do. And you're going to get stressed out if all you're thinking about is the circumstances around you. But when you recognize that God is with you, his power is real, his grace sustains you, that when you're weak, he is strong, that he carries you through, that in your weakness, his strength is made perfect, suddenly what used to seem like stress becomes an opportunity to tap into his power, to tap into the power of God. It's not about all that you have to do, it's how you think about all that you have to do. To do. You see, what we think is going to determine how we feel. And in this season, we've allowed our thoughts on a daily basis to determine how we feel. We have. We've allowed all the external voices to affect our feelings. And so we've allowed the media to affect us. We've allowed what's happening in the government to affect us. We've allowed the economy to affect us. We've allowed COVID to affect us. And then we're like, well, it's all of these things. That's the reason I feel the way that I do. It's the reason I'm overwhelmed. It's the reason I'm stressed out. It's the reason I have no peace for myself. There's this, it's all of these other things. But the truth is this, what we think determines how we feel. So if we wanna feel different, then we need to begin to think differently. And can I encourage some of you? Because there's a lot of people that I'm extremely worried about right now, if I'll be honest with you. Because we are allowing everything else to determine how we feel. We're taking our cues from the media, the government, and politicians, and we are getting overwhelmed, and we're allowing them to affect every other part of our lives. Let me encourage you in something. You need to get out of the rabbit hole. You need to turn off the TV. You need to stop listening to all the other voices. And here's what you need to do. You want to change the way that you're feeling? Stop listening to all the voices. Stop going down all the rabbit holes. Stop reading all the articles. Start turning on some music in your house. Get into the presence of God. Worship God. Say, God, you are great. You are awesome. You are powerful. You are in control. Get into the presence of God. And guess what's going to happen? You will begin to put this verse to test. And this is the word of God. Here's what it says in Philippians 4, 8 through 9. It says this, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, what does it say? Think about such things. Think about these things instead of everything else the world's feeding you right now. Think about things that are pure and lovely and true and admirable. And here is the result. If you would get into the presence of God, if you would worship God, if you would pour out your heart, begin to take on the mind of Christ, and it says, and the God of peace will be with you. Can you give Jesus Christ an ovation of praise if you believe that, church? Come on. The God of peace will be with you. When we begin to change the way that we are thinking, what we think determines how we feel. And there's nothing I want more for you than to experience the God of peace. I can't change the circumstances happening in the world. I can't change the circumstances that are going on all around you. But the one thing that I can do for you, the one thing that gives you hope, the one thing that's going to give you strength to face tomorrow is I can lead you to something that will give you peace in the middle of those circumstances. And his name is Jesus Christ. That is my hope. That is my foundation. That is the source of my strength. Stop allowing everything else in this world to determine how you feel. Begin to change your thinking and put your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ and you'll find peace peace in the middle of the storm. Give Jesus Christ an ovation of praise, church. The third thing about thinking is this, is our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. If you don't like where you're going, you need to change your thinking. If you don't like the direction of your life, you don't like the outcomes that you're getting, change your thinking because your life is moving in the direction 
of your strongest thoughts. If your thoughts are full of faith, if your thoughts are full of God's truth, then you're gonna be becoming more like Christ every single day. That's just the direction that you'll begin to move in. If your thoughts are negative, if your thoughts are toxic, if your thoughts are polluted, I promise you, you will not live in victory. You will struggle in your actions because your thoughts are far from God's truth. Our lives move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. We need to make sure that our lives are moving in the direction that we desire. Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5. It says this, those who are dominated by the sinful nature, what do they do? They think about sinful things. It's the direction their life moves in. They're gonna think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, their thought process, they think about things that please the Spirit. They think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind is gonna lead you somewhere. It's gonna move you somewhere in your life. It's gonna lead to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. The inner dialogue that you have with yourself matters, okay? I I hope I'm not the only person. I talk to myself. Anybody else talk to themselves, right? All right, I do. Like whether it's in the shower, whether I'm driving, sometimes I catch myself driving and I'm like talking to myself and I'm like, they think I'm weird next to me today. Like, I'm not a dreamer. Like, I don't have dreams at night that I can remember. I'm a daydreamer. And I start talking to myself. I get fired up. I I start thinking about things. And and I I just begin to move in those directions. But your life's going to move in the direction of your uh, strongest thoughts. So think about it for a second. How is your inner dialogue going? Are you dominated in your thought process? Are you dominated by sinful, negative, and critical thinking? Because if that's kind of the dialogue that's happening for you, guess what? That's the direction your life is moving in. And so I know some of you were in the church, and you're like, well, my, my life's not dominated by sinful thoughts. But can I tell you something? There's a lot of people in the body of Christ whose lives are dominated by critical, negative thinking. A lot. And that's a thought process And if you're dominated by those thought processes, guess what? That's where your life is going to go. Show me somebody that's negative and critical, and I'll show you someone whose life is in a direction that's moving further away from God because everything around you, you just begin to think about the negative. It influences you. People don't want to be around you then. I don't like to be around negative and critical people. You know who I want to be around? I want to be around people who are going to build me up. I want to be around people who are going to speak life into me. And so where is your thought process? Is your inner dialogue dominated by sinful, negative, and critical thinking? Or would you say that your mind is controlled by the Spirit of God? Is the thoughts that come from your mind consistent with God-honoring, Christ-directed thoughts? What's happening for you? What's the direction of your life? What's the direction of your thoughts? Is your thoughts more God-centered or more negative-based? Let me give you some examples. I mean, do you wake up in the morning and do you think to yourself, man, I'm a child of God. My life matters. I've got a great calling on my life. I'm full of faith. I'm ready to conquer this day. My mind is full of life and my life is full of peace because God is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Is that where your mind begins to take you? Is that your thought process? Or are you this other scenario? Are you the person who wakes up in the morning and you think to yourself, man, I am already hate this day. What is the purpose of my life? Does anything that I'm going to do today, is it even gonna matter? Man, I've gotta go to my stupid job. I gotta put up with stupid people. I gotta be around things that I don't wanna be around. Life is overwhelming. Life is too much. I don't, I hate my life and I have no purpose. What one describes you? And maybe you're not one or the other in those extremes, but there is a dialogue that's happening. There's thought processes that are working in you. And you need to understand that our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And so if your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts, are you, here's the question you need to ask, are you excited about the direction your thoughts are taking you? Do you get fired up about the direction your thoughts are taking you? Because we need to be dominated and controlled by the Spirit of God so that we're moving 
in the right direction, moving in the right direction, dominated and controlled by the Spirit of God so that we're moving in the right direction. Isn't this the whole thing about sin in our life? Like, think about it. What is sin? It's moving away from the direction of God. And if you want to get out of sin, what does the Bible say? It says you need to repent, you need to change your way of thinking, and you need to begin to move in a different way. If you want your life to move in a different direction, you are going to have to change your thought process. And so when it comes to thinking, everything begins with a thought. What we think determines how we feel, and our lives move in the strongest direction. So how do we change our thinking? How do we change this thought process that we're dealing with? How do we get to a different place? Here's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. If we want to change our thinking, here's the key. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And here's the key. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We we take captive our thoughts and we make it obedient to Christ. To Christ, We need to grab our thoughts before our thoughts begin to grab us, before our thoughts move us in a direction away from the plans and the purposes of God. And so we take captive every thought that comes in our hearts, every thought that we think. If you want to overcome the enemy in your life, here's the key. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. And so let me give you an action plan with the time that we have left. Let me give you some very practical, very practical steps that we should all be taking if we want a fresh start, if we want to develop a consistent pattern, if we want to change our way of thinking because we understand the power of a thought, so we need to begin to change the way that we think. The first is this, is you need to find a plan to control my thoughts. Find a plan to control my thoughts. So what's influencing your thoughts? Who's influencing your thoughts? Is it social media? Are you on the internet? Maybe you're on sites on the internet that you shouldn't be on, and that's beginning to affect your thinking, the the thought patterns. Is it the TV? Is it the music that you're listening to? Is it a friend that you've gotten close to, and, and they're not a godly friend, and they're controlling your thoughts? What is influencing your thoughts? And the best way, the best way that we can find a plan to control my thoughts is this. We need to read the Bible. We need to read the word of God. And I know this is basic for some of you, but it's so basic that you're not doing it. We're not allowing the word of God to help us take every thought captive. Because when we read the word of God, it will change how you think. And so we need to pick up the word of God. We need to consume it. We we need to watch how it will take the negative thoughts, the evil, awful thoughts that we have, and it begins to replace it with how God sees us, what God thinks about us. The Bible tells us that the word of God is powerful. It's not like any other book that you're ever going to pick up. You don't need to go to the New York Times bestseller. You don't need to go to the help section, the self-help section of the bookstore. You just need to grab the word of God and you need to allow it to sink in and begin to change the way that you think about yourself, the way that you see the world, the way that you are processing everything that's going on because it's his word that will begin to renew our thoughts and help us to take every thought captive. The word of God is powerful. It breathes, it has a heartbeat, it is alive, and it is active. Here's what Hebrews 4 verse 12 says about it. The word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes, this is why we don't like reading the word of God, because it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It exposes the way that we're thinking. It exposes the conversations we're having with ourselves. And the word of God is alive and powerful and it begins to expose those things. You could say it this way. Don't read the Bible. Let the Bible read you. That's what it wants to do. It wants to read you because it's alive and powerful. Don't just read it, but allow the Bible to read you. So find a plan to control my thoughts. The second thing you can do is this is find a place to think my thoughts. Find a place to think my thoughts. 
And so we need to all have a place within the context of our day where the world's volume is turned down and you can put your focus on God. Where we turn down everything else and our focus is solely on God. You have to have a place inside of your day to let God speak to you. And so of course this is prayer, but let me say it in a different way because so many of you guys get freaked out about prayer. Have a daily conversation with God. Have a daily conversation with God. God does not want your formality. God wants a conversation. And if we don't slow our lives down to a halt, and if we don't slow down long enough to have a daily conversation, then guess what? You are not going to be able to change the thought process. You're not going to be able to change the way that you are thinking. And if you think that time is an issue and you said, Aaron, I don't have any more time in my day to give up. If time is an issue, you need to understand this, that God would rather have a sentence from you than nothing at all. God would rather have a sentence than nothing at all. Then maybe you just need to start coming to God and say, okay, God, I'm really busy today. I wish I had more time, but know that I love you and know that I'm going to do my best to serve you today, amen. And what happens is you've begun to have a conversation with God and God begins to become accessible in your life and you begin to change the way that you think. Here's what Isaiah 26 verse three says. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts, once again, your mind, are fixed on you. You can't have your thoughts fixed on God if you're not having a daily conversation with God. Here's how the New Testament puts it. Colossians, think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. And so if there's not a moment in your day that you're thinking more about heaven instead of earth, you're probably gonna be low on the peace meter. So find a place to think my thoughts. The third thing is this. Find a person to stretch my thoughts. Find a person that's going to stretch your thoughts. You see, your life will be great if you line it up with God more and more. If you let him work in you, your life is going to be great. But even then, what we see in scripture is this, you won't reach your full potential until you involve God's people because involving God's people is a part of God's plan. And so I hear a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't need community. I don't need anybody else involved in, 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 in what's happening in my life. But you do, that's part of God's plan. And so we need to find a person who can stretch our thoughts. The Bible says that when you have a sin, you know what it says to do? It says confess it to God. But it also goes on to say if you actually want that sin to be healed, then you need to confess your sins one to another. That's what James 5 verse 16 says. It says confess your sins, pray for each other, and you will experience healing. And so we need to find a person to stretch my thoughts. So what do we, what's the action stuff? This is what you need to do. You need to get in community. Get in community. Get around people that have a better thought process than yourself. Get around people that are going to encourage you and build you up. I saw the effects of this just this week. Uh, the first Thursday of every month, we have a, a leadership meeting with our elders, and we come in here in the sanctuary, and we, we pray, and we pray over the church. We pray over the, the, the things that God wants to do, and we pray over your lives, and, and we just ask God to show up in miraculous ways. Then we go in, and, and we have a business meeting. We, we look at the finances. We talk about the future. And in that meeting this Thursday night, we got to the end of it, and we just started talking about all the amazing things that God's been doing in our church. We talked about how we've seen his hand move. We talked about his provision. We talked about stories that we've been hearing about how he's changing people's hearts and lives that are sitting in these seats every week. We talked about how he's been changing our lives. And can I tell you what happened inside of that meeting for me? Because I was in a group, I was with some community, I was with some other people who have a faith and a confidence in God. My faith got fired up. I'm sitting in there in that meeting, I'm hearing people talk and I'm just starting to write things down. I'm like, oh man, I didn't think this was possible. But you know what, God, if we can do anything, 
anything with you on our side. God, my faith is getting built up. God, I believe that you can do exceedingly abundantly above. Man, I was getting fired up in that meeting because what happened is I got around some other people who have a faith and a trust and a confidence in God, and they began to stretch my thoughts. My thinking expanded because of the people that I was around. One of the gentlemen that was actually in the meeting looked at me at the end and said, man, I've had a busy week. I worked over several times this week, and I honestly did not know if I was coming to this meeting tonight. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. And he looked at me, and he said, but I needed this last moment right here because my faith is getting built up. You see, we need to find some people that are going to stretch our thoughts. You need to get in community. Here's how Hebrews 10, verse 24 and 25 says it. Let us think of ways to motivate one another. Motivate one another. You're not going to get motivated if you're not in some community to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. He goes on on there in verse 25. Is there, oh, that's it. I've had it all together. Um, and to one another. So we need to encourage one another. We need to think of ways that we are motivating one another. You see what's happened during COVID? It's here's what I believe. The enemy has used the pandemic to erode people's faith. He's used it to erode your faith. Even some of you that are sitting here today, you would look back and say, after 2020, my faith was not as great or as strong as it was before 2020 happened. He's eroded people's faith. You know what he's done? He's created obstacles for worship. I see this in the body of Christ. Can I just be honest with you for a moment? I see it in the body of Christ. I see it with some of your lives. That you come in and, and before, before COVID, man, you would come in and you would just be ready to worship God. You'd be ready to go after him with everything inside of your heart. Just go, God, I'm, I'm here for you and you alone. And then we had to worship at home. We had to worship with maybe a, maybe a couple people in our living room and it just didn't feel the same for you. And you got out of a rhythm and pattern of worship and it, and it messed with your faith. He's used it to kind of isolate community. He put people in isolation. He, he got you away from the body of Christ. And guess what? When you don't have people around you, when you're not encouraging one another, guess what? It begins to diminish your faith. He turned up the volume of our world and that began to determine how we feel. And before we know it, after this year, we've seen our faith begin to erode. The world is getting hard to live in. We need the right people around us that are gonna encourage us, that are gonna pick us up, that are gonna build our faith. We need a group of people. And so you need to get into some community. You need to find a group here at Victory Hill. You need to find some people that are going to encourage you because they're gonna stretch your thought process and that's gonna change the way that you think. The fourth thing is this, find a purpose to land my thoughts. Find a purpose to land my thoughts. See, the healthiest thought you can have are thoughts about why you are on this planet. You see, a healthy thought is this. I know this situation is bad. I know things aren't going well, but I know why I'm here and I have a job to do. That's a healthy thought because you begin to find a purpose to land my thoughts thoughts. The most miserable people I know are not circumstantially miserable. It's not because of the circumstances. The most miserable people I know are people who don't know their purpose, who wake up every day and don't have anywhere for their thoughts to land, who wake up every day and kind of are just wandering through life. The healthiest thoughts you can have is about your purpose. When God shows up in your life and God speaks to us, you know what God speaks over your life? He says this, he says, I want you to settle your past. This is how we come into relationship with God. Hey, I want you to settle your past. I want you to get rid of the sin. I want you to get past that moment of, of what's happened. I want you to settle your past, and now let's focus on your future. That's what God does. Every single time he invades someone's life, he says, let's settle your past. Let's get all that behind us. Now, what are we going to do about your future? I have a purpose. I have a plan. I have a mission for your life. And I want us to think about those things. Put the past behind you. Throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. I've forgiven you. Let's move on. Let's move forward. But there's a future. There's a hope. There's a purpose for your life. That's, the God, that's what God does every single time. That's why in my, with my children, Landon and Jackson, I think I've told you this before. Every night we have a time of prayer before they go to bed. And when I pray over them, there's a routine prayer. There's, there's certain language that I use inside of the prayer that I pray over them every night. And the reason that it's pretty similar most nights is because I believe I'm declaring things over their life 
I believe I'm declaring the word of God for them. And when I begin to repeat that pattern, there, there's potential that's connected to our patterns. When I repeat that pattern, guess what? They begin to take on that mindset. And I watch it because now Landon, when he prays, he prays some of the very same things that I pray over his life. He starts praying it over all of our family. And one of the things that I pray over them every single night is, God, I know you have big plans for the future. God, you created them with a purpose. Now lead them to the purpose that you have for them. Lead them on the most incredible adventure that they're going on because, God, they have purpose to their life. Why? Because I want my boys to know however old they get, the older they get, their life has purpose. Their life has meaning. They need to have a place to land their thoughts, that God has a plan for their life. You see, in Romans 12, verse 2, we looked at the first part of this, but look at the second part. Don't copy the behaviors, behaviors and patterns of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then, once you've changed the way you thought, then you will learn to know God's will for you. Then you're going to know your purpose. Then you're going to have a place to land your thoughts, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God has a plan for your life. Keep your mind right, and you will find purpose. So how can you do that? What's a practical step you can do? We talk about growth track around here. I want to encourage you. If you've never gone to growth track, attend growth track. Part of the reason we do Growth Track is we want to tell you about the church. We want, to, want you to know who we are. We want you to know the purpose of the church what we're on mission for, so that you can join in on that, so that you can be a part of that. But we also want you to find and discover your purpose. Because once you find your purpose, life changes. Once you find a place to land your thoughts, your thinking begins to change. You begin to look at everything you do in a different light. You begin to look at why you go to work. You begin to look at the people around you differently. You look at church differently. And so we want you to find purpose in your life. You need a purpose to land your thoughts. And so we want to help you discover that. We want that to come out because there's a purpose stirring inside of you. The final thing is this. Before we finish, find a power to fuel my thoughts. Find a power to fuel my thoughts. When God speaks to you, God has a plan. He says, let's settle the past. Now let's talk about your future. When God speaks to you, because he has purpose for you, he will tell you something that's too big for you to do on your own. He will. When he calls you to something, it's bigger than you. He wants to inspire you to something great and significant, but it will always require that you do it hand in hand with him. He wants to do it with you. That's why he sent his Holy Spirit to walk with you daily. That's why his Holy Spirit is present because he has a purpose and his Holy Spirit is the power that's gonna fuel your thoughts. And so here's what you need to do. You need to open your life to the power of the Holy Spirit. Open your life to the work of the Holy Spirit, to the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's how Isaiah 55 verse nine says it. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, the way that God thinks, guess what? They're higher than your thoughts. They're bigger than your thoughts. Several years ago, actually about four years ago, we started praying this prayer inside of this church. And I'm still praying this prayer, just so you know. God is able to do beyond all that I can verbalize, all that I can ask, all that this little mind of mine can think about or imagine not according to my strength or ability, but according to his power. That's the power that's gonna fuel our thinking, his power that's at work in us. God is able to do beyond all that we can ask, think, or imagine. And so the thoughts that you have are gonna determine the direction of your life. And we need to find a power that's gonna fuel our thoughts. And when I begin to come to God and I begin to dream dreams and, and have big vision, guess what? It's not my ability that's gonna see it accomplished. It's the power of God. It's the Holy Spirit working in us that's gonna move us forward to seeing those things accomplished. And so our thinking is so important. If we want a fresh start, we need some consistent thoughts. We need to understand that everything begins with a thought. 
We need to then, if everything begins with the thought, we need to have that mind of Christ. How, what we think determines what we feel. And so we need to begin to filter through what God says about us. And our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So where are your thoughts leading you? So you need a plan. You need to get a control of them. Let me ask you this. What negative thoughts are influence in affecting your life? What's hindering your life from what God has for you? Where are you struggling with your thought process? How has the enemy gotten a hold of your mind and your thoughts? And how is that affecting your daily life? For some of you, your anxiety is through the roof because you've allowed everything else to determine how you're gonna feel. Some of you are lacking so much peace because you've allowed the enemy to grab a hold of your mind. But a fresh start begins with consistency. So we need to develop some consistent thoughts. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? A fresh start starts with consistency. We need some consistent thoughts with every head bowed and every eye closed. Let me ask you this. Here's what I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do right here. I think he wants to renew our minds. I think he wants us to take every thought captive by putting on the mind of Christ. I think for some of you, the Holy Spirit wants to invade your space, your life today in ways that he's never done before. Every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're here today and you would say, Aaron, if I'm being truthful, I'm so full of stress. I'm so full of anxiety. My life is overwhelmed right now. My thought process is negative. It's critical. It's it's not moving in the direction that I want it to. I'm overwhelmed. I'm allowing everything else to affect how I'm feeling. If you would say, Aaron, that's me in one of those categories, would you just raise your hand? Would you acknowledge that? I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. Just acknowledge it to that. Acknowledge it. And here's what I believe. I believe the God of peace wants to invade you. I think the God of peace wants to invade your heart and your mind and your spirit. Some of you are so consumed. I get things aren't great in our world and our government and everything that's happening. But some of you I'm worried about. I'm worried about what's gonna happen this week for some of you and the, the inner turmoil that's going on. And I believe right now that God wants us to begin to take some thoughts captive. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna get into an atmosphere of worship. We're gonna begin to believe the thoughts that God has for us. We're gonna begin to declare who God is and what God wants to do. And I believe that if you'll push in, and when you recognize, you're going, Aaron, my life is overwhelmed, stressful, full of anxiety. There's negative thoughts. There's critical spirits that today in this place, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he just wants to break those things off. So our team is coming and I didn't know they were singing this song until where they were singing at in the the service until I looked at our schedule this morning. They're closing today with a song called Protector. And it talks about coming into agreement with the things of God. And can I tell you, that's the very way you're gonna change your thinking. When you begin to see yourself as God sees you, when you begin to declare that I am a child of God, I don't have to live overwhelmed, stressed out, full of anxiety, that there is a power, there is a spirit of God that's available to each and every one of us, that he can break off mindsets, that he can break off strongholds, and that there can be a freedom in your mind, and that you can begin to think about the things that God thinks about you, that you can see yourself the way that God sees you, that he is a protector that he is a sustainer, that he is the, you are a child of the most high God. So we're gonna do that today. And I wanna encourage some of you. Maybe for some of you, you just need to take a step out of where you're standing. Maybe you need to find a little space here in the altar and you just need to be go, God, here I am. Consume my thoughts, consume my mind consume my thinking and 
push out everything else that's not of you. Holy Spirit, right now, God, in this room, and those gathered in their homes right now, I pray the peace of God will begin to settle in this place. God, I pray that we would have your thoughts. God, I pray that we would take on your mindset today. God, that you love us, that you are with us. And God, we want, Lord, a fresh start, but God, it's gonna start when we begin to have some consistent thoughts. God, for some of us, break off the critical spirits, break off the negative thoughts, break off the complaining. And God, bring freedom to our minds. God, for some people today, there is so much stress. There is so much anxiety, God. God, there is borderline, God, where they're moving to a place where there's depression because, God, the thoughts that they have for their life, for their future, has led them to a place where they don't think there's hope for tomorrow. And, God, I bind that in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, God, today, God, today, our lives come into agreement with you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are our protector. You are the healer of our hearts. You are the healer of our minds. You are the one who protects and filters out everything else that tries to come into our minds and our spirits. And so God, today we lean into your Holy Spirit and God, we worship you. And so God, we create, Father, and we enter into an atmosphere of worship. Church, that's what you're gonna have to do today. If you wanna feel that today, you're gonna have to press in. You have to filter out everything else and you need to press in a little bit and you need to begin to declare these truths over your life. Get into an atmosphere of worship. Believe, think about things that are lovely and pure and holy. And then the God of peace will take over you. Then the God of peace will take over you. Holy Spirit, right now, move in this place. Fill us with your spirit.